thank you so much for choosing to be a part of RW Online. We are so excited to have each and every one of you with us today, taking part with us in this service. We want to be able to connect with you in a deeper way, much more than you just watching us online, participating with us in worship, but we want to be able to connect with you. One of the ways that we can do that is every Thursday available for you is our Connect class online. You can sign up for that in our digital Connect card that's available below. Also, if you would like to give, we want to make that option available for you to be able to plant a seed into this ministry. You can do that through downloading the RW app, which you want to make sure that you have that. It's available in all app stores. Or you can text at 84321 give and you can give your tithing and offering to missions however you want to be a blessing to the lord in this ministry also available to you is our royalwood church tv app it's available through roku tv as well as apple tv make sure that you go on there you check out all of our past archive sermons thank you so much for joining us for this service make sure that you remove every obstacle every distraction let's get together and worship and enjoy this service Welcome, welcome to Royalwood Church today on this Wednesday evening. Let me say to you today, and I know you understand this, but midweek matters. It's just something about that time that we can come together, study the Word of God, receive something from the Lord right in the middle of the week. We used to always live from Sunday to Sunday, forgetting the fact that we have to be sustained. Really, the Scripture talks about daily bread. We ought to have that on a day-by-day uh, -day basis. We don't need to eat a little bit of something here uh, tonight and then, and then go as long as we can without ever partaking of the good things of God again. We want to be able to be partaking of daily bread. So please pay co play close attention to this today and be ready for what the Lord would say to us today. I do feel something on my heart for this Wednesday. I think God's going to do some good things. This is first Wednesday. So normally what would be happening is uh, if we were in-person church, Anthem would be leading us. There would be excitement in the air and people would be worshiping, praising the Lord. We'd all be together in this auditorium and uh, then I would be able to preach to you. But today uh, we're not in service together. So we're gonna have to uh, just do the best that we can. I hope that you put all the distractions aside and get ready for what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna read from the Gospel of Luke and we'll read the 15th chapter, and I'm going to read verse number 20. Now, the reason I'm getting here, this is the middle of a story, but I didn't, want to, I didn't want to read all of this. It would be a very lengthy reading, but I'll go back and explain to you uh, when I get through with this scripture. And after prayer, we'll go back and I'll tell you a little story and then uh, give you the scripture text. And, and this is what I feel like the Lord wanted me to talk to you about today. The 20th verse. And he arose, now I want you to keep this in mind, this is the prodigal son, and he came to the father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and he had compassion, and he ran and fell on his neck 
and kissed him. Keep that in mind. I want you to keep all of those thoughts in mind. Let me read it again. And he arose, talking about the son that left his father, went to a far country, wasted everything that he had. We call him the prodigal son or the wayward son. Came to his father and when he, the prodigal, was a great way off, his father saw him. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion for him. I get that. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. For just a little bit, let me talk to you about a great way off. I preached from these scriptures a, a, a little different direction back on one of our friend days. And uh, I talked about the father always getting there first. But the thing I want to emphasize today is the fact that this boy was a great way off. That's what I'm talking about today, a great way off. Now, look, put everything aside. Let's pray together. It's, it's so important that we talk to God together. Wherever you are, just bow your head. If you're with your family watching this today, you're part of the Royalwood family. When we're able to be in church, uh, you, you consider this a part of your church. This is your place of worship. This is your church. I'm your pastor. Then we have an online audience. We call it Royalwood Church Online that are a part of us consistently watching, supporting and praying and being a part, although they may be many, many miles away, some in other countries, but we want you to know that we appreciate your faithfulness and keeping up with the things of God. So we're going to talk to the Lord for just a minute, and then I'm going to get right into the Word of God, and I pray that this would be a blessing to you today. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to be in your house, to be able to speak your word, and I pray today that I could be anointed to preach this anointed word today, this powerful word today. And I'm asking you that you'd touch all of our hearts. You would let us be warm toward these things, Lord, these precepts that, that you have placed on my life today. I want to share those with people today. And I'm asking you to touch those wherever they are, touch our people today, touch those guests that are watching today that just stopped by the, by, by the Facebook page or the website and, and they're a part of this today and help them to know, Lord, that you care for them and let something be said that would be a blessing to someone today in Jesus' name. We ask all of these favors. Amen. You know, this is a, this is a, a good story, but it doesn't start off good. It starts off where Jesus is telling a story about a man that has two sons. The younger uh, son said to his father, Father, give me what belongs to me, my portion, my inheritance. And he divided it among himself or the young boy and the other brother. And he went from that father's place, his home, to a far country, and he wasted everything on unclean, unrighteous, unholy living. And when he spent everything, the scripture said there was a famine in the land, and he began to be in need. And he goes and joins himself to a citizen of the country who happened to have swine or hogs. And he let that boy that left his father's house go out and feed the hogs. That's the only job he could get where he was. And he would fill his belly, his body, with the things the hogs were eating, and no man gave unto him. There wasn't anybody that was going to help you. Let me stop and just tell you something. You know, when you're trying to live for God, you're trying to stay away from the drug scene, alcohol, and the, the, the wrong kind of living. You ever notice that, that, that when, when, when you're trying to live for the Lord, everybody that you ever had in your, in your old life, they want you to go with them. They just, they'll buy it. They'll, they'll provide anything you want to provide. They can't wait till, you, till you're a part of the party scene with them. And, and you go in your apartment at first, it's like this is the best thing going on, man. I, I didn't realize all this fun was out here. And then all of a sudden your money runs out and, and then those that would have paid the bill, they won't. And those that were your friends are gone. 
And now you find yourself all alone. And I know you've been that way. A lot of times you lay down in your bed at night, you close your eyes and you wonder what's going to happen with my life and what about eternity and what if the rapture takes place and I'm left behind. And maybe it's one of those things where you're just doing the same things over and over again, living outside of God and outside of the will of God. And maybe you just finally get to a place where you're just tired of living the same old life. And what happened to this boy? He had lost everything. But nobody was there to help him then. When he could buy the drinks, he had plenty of friends. But when he didn't have money to buy something to eat, there wasn't anybody that gave to him or stood with him. That's what the Bible said. And the scripture said he came to himself. I want you to get this. A lot of times people are looking for external things to come. So somebody's going to come and give you something that's going to wake you up. But what I'm praying for today on this Wednesday evening is that we can come to ourself. There's no better revelation than God shining the light on ourselves and we see ourselves. Let me stop here and say this. This is, this is to me a tragedy among churches. And I'm just going to say not only Royalwood Church, but churches in general. We can see everybody but ourselves. Almost 36 years, 35 years of pastoring this church here. I can tell you, I've, I've, I've pastored a multitude of people. They saw everybody's, uh, every fault in everyone's children, but their own. They saw the faults of everybody, everything that anybody was doing. They could see every fault, but they couldn't see their own. Let me tell you, if you're always seeing faults, that's a fault now that you have because you're seeing the wrong thing. You should be looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Here he comes to a place where he comes to himself and he begins to think about home. There's many hired servants there. And he said, they're in the father's house. They have bread enough to spare. And I'm going to perish with hunger. I'm the son, but the servants in my father's house have bread enough to spare. They can eat all they want. They can, they can have all the drink they want. They can, they can go wherever they want to go. They're, they're blessed. And here I am, the son. <clears throat> I'm perishing with hunger. And this is the crucial step. He begins to talk to himself. I will arise, I will go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven, and I've si sinned before you. He's having this talk with himself. Some of you need to have a good talk with yourself. You need to sit down with yourself. When you're alone, you need to start asking yourself the question, where am I going? What's happening in my life? What am I becoming? What am I accomplishing? Or are you just like the little hamster that's in the little cage and you're just running, 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 but you're not making forward progress? Ask yourself some questions. He said, I'm no more worthy. This is what he's going to tell his dad when he gets home to be called your son. Make me one of the hired servants. That's all I want to do. Now he is coming in in humility. I'm going to tell you something. If, if, if at that moment of his life, when, when, he, when he realized that, hey, I, I, I want to take my inheritance, if he would have had that humility going out, he could have come in in a different way coming back. But what ends up happening, we think we've got the world by the tail, we've got everything going, our health is good, our strength is good, the job is good, everything's good. Uh, there, I, I have no worries, I have no problems until we get to a place where we're without. Not necessarily monetarily, but we're empty. And when we get to that place, we begin to have thoughts of the Father's house. There's some of you that hadn't been in church in a mighty long time. You, 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 I'm sure you pray, and I, I'm sure occasionally read your Bible, but, but you're not really committed to it. You, you know, it, it's, it's really not a, a, a big part of your life. And, but at times when you're alone, you have that longing to be back there, to be able to feel the presence of the Lord there. Maybe you had one of those disappointing moments uh, in, in your situation of life where somebody in the church hurt your feelings. When you get to, you know, when you get in a, a good body of believers, there's always somebody that does something crazy. There's always somebody that's insensitive or something. Maybe you got hurt. Maybe you got hurt at the church. Maybe you got hurt at the pastor, whatever the situation might be. And listen, in this world, there's going to be tribulation. There's going to be offenses. People will offend you at cer certain points and in certain places. Sometimes as a pastor, it's not really always things that we do. Sometimes we hurt people because they had expectations that we do not fulfill. We didn't do what they thought that we should do. 
And, and many times as a pastor, you didn't even know that someone wanted you to do those things, but people are hurt. If you're here today and, and, and you say, look, I'm watching this service today, pastor, and I, I'm gonna tell you, I, I'm just, there's just times I just get disgusted uh, with, with, with church and with religion and, and what's wrong with me? I'm gonna tell you, I'm in that same club with you. I'm disgusted with things that go on at church. I'm disgusted with religious activity many, many times. The thing that hurts me the most is the judgmentalism that goes on, not only in the family, not only in our church and other churches, but I'm talking about just in religion. You gotta meet this, you gotta do that, you gotta do this, and then you're looked at in a certain way, and only God really sees us, only God really knows what we're doing, and that's the scary part to me. But he was fed up with where he was. So he's going to go back to the father's house. He's going to tell the father, <clears throat> I've been thinking about the hired servants, and they have more than, than I do. They, they have bread enough to spare, and I've been starving to death. All I'm asking you, Father, I've sinned against the Lord. I've sinned in front of you, and all I'm asking you is make me one of the hired servants. I just want to get in there somewhere and not be seen. I don't need any attention. I just got to get in there where I can just be in the Father's house, just to be there, the, the covering of that, the, the, the good clean bed at night and food to eat. I just can't wait to get out of this hog pen and get back there to the Father's house. And so he arose, he came to his father. Now, before he gets there, while he was a great way off, now I want you to keep that. I want you to put that in parentheses today. I want you to, I, I want you to frame that up, circle it, uh, or underline it with red pen. He was a great way off when the father saw him and had compassion on him. It wasn't his story. It wasn't that he came and confessed to the father. Before he ever spoke anything, the father looked out, saw him, possibly something in the way he walked, something just he recognized, that's, that's my son, he's coming back. He has compassion on him, and the scripture said the father ran to him. Now I want you to get this. Some of you feel like you're a long way off, and you're not making much headway, you're not making much progress. The winds of life are contrary to you, and and, and, and maybe you feel like I can't, I can't accept the mercy of God. I can't, I can't be a recipient of the grace of God. I can't let that overshadow my life. I, I can't, I can never be anything. You don't understand how I've been in my marriages and how I've been with this and the things I've done. I've stolen things. I've lied. I've cheated. I've done these, these things that are despicable, things I'm not going to testify to anybody about. I'm embarrassed and ashamed by all of these things. And I, I don't know what to do at this point. When you come to yourself and you have the feeling of the Father's house, there's got to be something there. <laughs> Even if I'm just going to be a hired servant, I'm willing to get back there. I'm willing to be whatever uh, my Father wants me to be. There is something you've got to see. You may feel you're a great way off. You may be distant from God in the things that you do, in the life that you live. But I'm going to say to you today that when you turn toward the Father's house, He will see you and He will have compassion on you and He will get to you before you can get to Him. You know something? David, no one really started back any farther away than David did when he took over the places that he did and became the great king that he was. But God ran to him when he was in the pasture, when nobody was seeing him, when nobody thought he was going to amount to anything. He's just a little fair-headed boy or fair-skinned boy playing on a harp and singing these songs and and, and, and nobody's going to pay any attention to him. Nobody thinks there's, there's anything to him. He's just a teenager. He's just a youth. He's just a lad. And yeah, he's got tales of, uh, of killing a lion and killing a bear and, and all of those things. But, but what more can he do? Well, when the Lord saw him, he had compassion on a little boy that believed he could be used of God. And the scripture lets us know that David became the man that he was, killing giants, conquering cities, warriors, building the temple or putting the supplies together to build it, a man after God's own heart. 
he came a long way. He had fallen so far away with Bathsheba, but while he was a great way off, the Lord never let him go. The Lord never let him down. You know something, when Joseph uh, in the scripture was dressed in his wild, ostentatious sport coat, it was, it was, it was ridiculous with his brothers. It was ridiculous the way the father felt about Joseph. It was crazy the dreams that Joseph had it, and the audacity to tell those ridiculous dreams about everybody bowing down to you. And that's one of the things that caused him, them to want to get rid of him. We've got to get, we got to get this brother out of our life. He's ridiculous. But while he was in the prison, the Lord ran to him because he is going to deliver the people of God and he's going to become a great leader and he's going to save his family and the dreams are going to be fulfilled because the Lord is not going to let that go. Listen, he was so far away. He's in Egypt now. He's in a place that is symbolic uh, of being in the place of sin and sinners. He is, he is excommunicated away from the family. He's, he's not able to, to attend and, and, and be the things that, that maybe he would want to be growing up. He's been in a prison. And he's been at Potiphar's house and Potiphar's wife is lying on him. And now he's in the prison and he's with the baker and the butler from the king's house. And, and they're giving dreams and he's giving interpretation. And finally, they they recognize this guy has something. There's something here in him. He's a great way off, but God's got a plan for him. Listen, you're a great way off, but God's got something for you. Some of you think you've wasted your life. You've wasted your time. You, 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 you wasted everything. What are you going to become? You, you've gone on up in your years. And, and uh, man, I should have lived for the Lord when I, was, when I was in my teenage years. I loved him passionately. And now look at where I'm at today. I, I'm way out here. A lot of things have happened. I don't even know if I could ever make my way back. But before you can ever get to him, he will see you in that great way off place. And he will come to you. The Lord knows a great way off is no match for the father. He has compassion. Some people think that the further you get from the Lord, that, you know, well, I, I tell you, Pastor, I, if I come back to God, I'm going to have to be baptized uh, again. I, I was baptized in my teenage years at a youth camp, and I, I'll have to be rebaptized. I'll have to go through all of that. Look, look, there wouldn't be any really any reason to be rebaptized. But I will tell you this, if you want to be rebaptized, we'll rebaptize you. You can be baptized enough until you know the tadpoles in the baptistry by their first name. You, you, can, you, can, you can get in the water, you can be baptized, you can shout, you can dance, you can worship, you can speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance, and all of those things are wonderful. But today in your great way off condition, the Father has compassion on you. He's looking at you. Things have happened already and you just wonder, would that be the Lord? Would God be doing this for me when I'm not doing anything for him? This boy is coming back saying, make me one of the hired servants. But let me tell you what the father said. Get the best robe. Get shoes and put them on his feet. We're not having him be without sandals. Put those on his feet. Get the ring, the signet ring of, of royalty and, and, and place of power and position. Get that for him and put it on his hand because my son who was dead is now alive. Get the fatted calf that was sitting over in a pen just for a moment when there could be celebration and there could be uh, exaltation of something, some great event, maybe a wedding or something take place. But he goes, go get the fatted calf. We're not waiting for anything else. My boy was dead. Now he's alive. We're going to rejoice. We're going to celebrate. And, and so they bring that in because this is a great moment. Do you understand this today? I don't care how far in sin you are. It doesn't matter how deep you have fallen. Do you understand this today? That when you get down on your knees and you begin to say, Lord, forgive me of all my sin. Lord, cleanse me from the place that I'm at today. The scripture said there is rejoicing in the presence of angels when one sinner comes to repentance. Do you understand angels don't get excited about our music? Angels don't get excited 
excited about our orthodoxy. Angels don't get excited about the fact that we've got a good doctrine or that we've got a good church building or that we give to mission. None of that stuff really gets the angels in gear. But you let one sinner start repenting and there's rejoicing in the presence of angels when one sinner comes to repentance. You could get a jubilee in heaven if you would just ask the Lord to forgive you. God ran toward that little boy, David, when he got ready to fight Goliath. He didn't look like a giant killer. He looked so far away as, as far as a soldier would be and, and what a soldier looks like and what a warrior looks like. But while he was a boy with a sling and some rocks, the Lord ran to him. People at one time wanted to kick the boy when he came in and said, is there not a cause? Is, can we go up here? And everybody is telling him, what are you doing? You're just a kid. Uh, we're warriors here. Now we're hiding, but you know, we're warriors here. What are you talking about? He said, well, there needs to be somebody to go fight him. I'm going to go fight him. Saul tells him, well, let me give you some armor. He puts the armor on. He said, I, th th this don't fit me. I, I can't. Uh, th th I, I just can't. I, there's things I know will work, and I'm going to use those things. So he goes out to meet the giant and in a moment the entire army wanted to kick him and get him out of there but it wasn't long until a giant's laying flat on his back, his head's been cut off by his own sword and now they don't want to kick him, they want to kiss him because he's a great warrior. Elijah got so discouraged at one point, he said just Lord let me die, that's, that's a terrible condition for a prophet to get in. Some of you get that feeling like, well, I need to just go on living. I, I don't know what this is going to be. Lord, why don't you just uh, uh, t take my life? I, th this is crazy. I, I'm just living this. I don't, I don't know. Elijah was a great way off. He was a great way off in the valley of discouragement, but the Lord came to him when he was a great way off. I know you're down. I know you're discouraged. I know you're despondent. I know you've done things that are wrong. You know you've done things that are wrong. But before you get to thinking the Lord can't see you, the Lord don't care for you. While you're a great way off, he has compassion for you. An Egyptian prince that took Joseph in gave us the ruler of, of Egypt, one of God's own people. It was a Bethlehem stable that gave us a savior. What a great way off that is. Oh yeah, you would think that a king would come and be born, fly in on a 747 jet, get out, come walking down a star-studded celestial staircase, angels singing, blowing the trumpets, announcing his arrival, but it's in a barn, a stinky barn, gives us the ruler, the king, the Lord of all. That's a great way off but he moves in that distance. It doesn't take a bank account for the Lord to have compassion for you. Listen to me, pay attention to this. The Lord going to you, the Lord reaching to you, it, it, it's not about who you are in your goodness and your righteousness. It's his righteousness. It's his mercy. It's his compassion as the father that moves him to run and make up the distance. Oh, he could have sat there on the porch and said, he needs to come the right way. He needs to come on bended knee. Or as the elders used to say, he needs to come with his hat in his hand. I'm sorry, I've been a sinner. He didn't know what the boy was going to say, but he's not waiting on what he's going to say. He's got intention, restoration. Do you hear that today? Restoration is the intent of God. Not judgment is not the intent of God for you. Restoration is the intent of God for you. You're a distance. You're a great distance. You're a great way off. But he will run to you. It doesn't matter about your bank account. It doesn't matter what all you can offer the Lord, what all you can give the Lord, how much time you got left and what you did with your, oh yeah, it's okay to come and say, Lord, I'm not even worthy to be called uh, your son. I just, if I could just be a servant, just put me over in the servant's quarters and just let me be one of the servants and just be one of the hired hands. That's all, that's all I want to be. But the father saw something. The father realized there's more to this story. Yes, he's wasted everything. 
Yes, he can't go back and collect any of that. Yes, he can't go to the far country and tell everybody, listen, uh, listen, I know I was in here and I bought drinks for everybody, but I want that money back because I shouldn't have done that. I've been wrong, all that. He, he, none of that can be recovered. It's gone. It's, fi it's finished. But if that boy will stay in the father's house and be what he needed to be, restoration was in his future. He already now has shoes on, his feet are washed and clean. He's no longer looking, he, he, he doesn't have all of the, the debris from the hog pen sticking to him. He, he's got a new robe on, the, the best robe he's got it put on him and the, the ring is put on his hand and now he's ready to go. And, and now they're killing the fatted calf and they're making merry. Everybody go out in the community and tell them, my son was lost, but now he's found. And I can't end this without telling you, there's a rest of the story to that. And that is the elder brother. Wow. He hears all the merriment, he hears all of the celebration. He comes in and asks somebody, hey, what's going on? Hey, your brother's, brother's home, your little brother's home. Your father has killed the fatted calf. We're having a celebration. Come on in, it's a, <clears throat> it's a great day. The Bible said he was wroth. In other words, he was angry. And he would not go in. He wouldn't go into the celebration. He had feelings about this. I could understand that. He saw the hurt in his father's eyes. He, he saw the disappointment when the boy took his inheritance and goes out. I don't need the dad. I don't need dad anymore. I don't need anything. I just want what's mine. I'm, I, I'm jumping over my time and I want this early. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and I'm going to make some investments and I don't need y'all's help and no communication, no contact. He saw the dad hurting every day for the son that was outside of the family. Finally, the father goes out Somebody said, hey, the elder brother's out there, but he, he won't come in. He, the father goes out and says, well, son, come on in. Your, father, your son's back. You know, my son's back. Your, your brother's back. This is a great day. And he said, no, no, he, he wasted everything. You've never killed the fatted calf for me. You've never, you never put a ring on my hand. You never gave me the best robe. And you're doing all this for him. And he wasted everything, Dad. And then the attitude of the father, I want you to listen to what he said. He said, son, while your brother was gone, everything I have is yours. You have been in possession of every benefit by staying in my house. You have nothing to be angry about. You haven't missed a meal. You haven't worn tattered garments. You've been faithful and I have blessed you and the, the, the end of the story hasn't come yet. So don't begrudge restoration. Let your brother come on back home. This is what we've been praying for. This is what we've been asking for. Look, sometimes you get in the church and you've been in the church for a good while. You get to thinking you have seniority. And somebody comes in Lord fills them with his spirit. We baptize them. They, they, they're, they're living for God. They're doing a great work. A month or two, they're, 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 they're singing. They're participating. They've got talent. They have a zeal of God. They're on fire for God. God begins to advance them in the kingdom of God. And it's so easy to sit around sometime and, and then become critical and jealous because it appears, well, look, I mean, they've been out there doing all of this stuff. I've never done any of that. And it just seems like they've been able to come right back in and, and God's doing wonderful things for them. And, and I don't understand how that can happen. I've been faithful. You're exactly right. You have been. And all the time you were faithful, he was faithful to you. You know something? If you raise your family for God and in the presence of God, and you see somebody coming in, they bring their family in and there's all kinds of things going on in the family and, and, and it seems like God straightens all that out and you get to thinking, well, look, I've been faithful and, and, and it seems like they just come right in, get all the benefits right away. But listen to me, the whole time you've been in the father's house, did you ever go down and get your kids out of jail? 
Did you ever run to the hospital because there was a drug overdose? Or did you ever have somebody knock on your door in the middle of the night and demand money because there's something that has taken place? Have, have you ever had the police had, had to call the police out because there's a domestic situation in your own home? Listen, if you haven't had that, be thankful that you never had to worry about that. You've been in the, you've been in the family of God. You've been in the house of the Father. Everything's been going good for you. The, the, the family's blessed. They don't have to worry about it. The, the, you, you didn't have that child out of wedlock that you had to go and you had to love them even though they don't know who the father is. That's what happens. People come in and they're tattered and they're torn and they've been in the hog pen and, and when they come back in, it's just like the Lord's been looking for them. He's been moved with compassion for the things they're doing. They're doing such damage to themselves. This is not a good road. This is not a great story. This is something that's going to be uh, uh, situations that will never be fixed. But if you're in the father's house, don't begrudge the compassion of a father that will make his way to one coming home. Don't let that ever enter in to your heart. Listen, a great way off. Through all of this, we're not able, have not been able to be in church. I know sometimes we feel distant from the church, our people, our friends, our, our church family. We're not able to be in the house of the Lord lifting our hands. Last Sunday when the worship was going on and we were viewing the service, oh, listen, Sister Macy and I sung with it. We praised the Lord. I said, oh, I wish we could be, I would have been right on that front singing that song to the top of my voice. We miss all of that. We feel like we're a great way off from him. But when you're a great way off, the Father sees you. Don't forget that. Dear God, how great you are, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Lord, today, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you that we haven't lost one member with this dreaded disease. You have protected our church people. You have brought them through those that were infected. You have helped with jobs and you, you, you've helped with needs that we couldn't have done, Lord. You blessed us in spite of darkness. I want to thank you for that today. Oh, we're so grateful to be in the Father's house. Lord, let someone today who is a great way off be brought up close. And Lord, let your compassion turn into transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you the next time we can be together. Thank you so much for joining us for this service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and your family. If you want to sow seed back into this ministry, you can do that through our app, you can do that online, or you can also text to give at 84321. Make sure that you join us this Wednesday at 730. We're coming to you again right here on our Royal Wood page. Thank you for joining us and have a great week. the church is what's going on here.